Hello everyone, DJ Collectibles 99 here, and today I am super excited to show you the Avengers Endgame Hot Toys Thor figure. I finally have been able to get him. I've been waiting a while for him. Um, if you know Hot Toys, um, you know that um, it can take up to about like a year at least for production to be finished. So I'm really, really excited that it's finally here. Um, and uh, if you're wondering, I did get him from SideshowCollectibles.com. Um, if you, uh, decide to pick them up after the review is done, um, I highly suggest going through them because they're really nice and their customer service is really great too. I've gotten several figures from them and, uh, I, I just really love their service. Um, I actually had an issue with one of my figures and they replaced it no problem. So, um, yeah, definitely highly recommend them if you, uh, haven't shopped through them before. They have you know, Disney couture figures, stuff like that, as well as um, high premium pieces like this. So um, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the review. I'm super, super duper excited because I already have him out of the box and I can already tell you he is amazing already. Um, but starting out with the box here, you can see that it has this really, really cool art print. Um, it's like, like a, almost like an oilish painting type of texture to uh, the character himself. And then in the background you have like the Avengers logo as well as like red cosmic dust that kind of matches his character color scheme. Um, I got uh, the Avengers Endgame Black Widow too and she had a very similar style box but it's all like color coded and stuff. And then right here you can see it says Marvel Avengers Endgame and the uh, classic logo for the movie. And then it does say Thor that's the product number and then this is the one six scale collectible figure so yeah he has one six scale and then it says hot toys right here as well as a uh, movie masterpiece going to the side um this is a slip cover so you can see a little bit of underneath it has um his logo which is his hammer and then you can see more of that continued like really cool like textured pattern of the dust. It's really nice. And then down here, he is of course an Avenger. So they have the Avengers logo down here as well. And then on the side here, you can see it says the same thing on the front, Thor, the product number, and then the uh, one six scale collectible figure. On the back, there is again, his name as well as what he is. Um, and then it has Hot Toys description on the back just different types of warning labels and stuff um, because this is an art piece not a toy um, they're extremely they can be extremely fragile breakable and they're super pricey so definitely um, recommend um, an adult collector or if there is um, a younger person who wants this definitely make sure that they uh, you know will follow all the directions for them because they can be um, they can be a little tedious with the directions depending on um, what they're made out of because you know they're made out of different things sometimes different textures and suits and some are fison which um, is like a rubberized body um he thankfully isn't but that's extremely delicate so you just got to know before you um pose your figure what you're kind of dealing with um but yeah they are really cool still even though they're kind of like a little bit delicate at times but uh back here you can see the uh red pattern again and then it's kind of like almost like gray tones and stuff like that that shows like kind of like a galaxy background so I really like that it's really cool going to this side it's pretty much the same as um the other side when it comes to this logo and stuff but you can see a little bit of his uh like uh his axe so that's kind of cool and then going back to the front here on top it says Thor 1-6 scale figure with the Avengers logo um, and this is um, a kind of slip style there's different style boxes that they use but this one they chose slip so you just kind of like slip the cover off the top and it reveals the figure underneath it would usually be enclosed and you can see him through the window right about there but I took him out but you can still see I haven't had all the accessories and stuff out yet um, so you can see them kind of in there. So if you're an inbox collector, you can still see them. Um, I will say it's not like if you're someone who doesn't debox, um, they aren't super clear to see because they're covered in like plastic and stuff. 
Um, so this type of figure is kind of meant to be deboxed and displayed on a stand, um, but you can still see him nonetheless if you so chose to. And then right there is his hammer again. And then you can kind of see how the sides come together. And then on the back, a really cool feature is a um, disintegrating Avengers logo, which is really, really cool. I thought that was a nice detail that is otherwise covered up. But yeah, I think that is all for the box. So let me bring him up, get all of his accessories out, and I will be sure to show you all the amazing details that this figure has to offer. Okay, now he's out of the box and I am super, super excited to show you everything. There's so much to show and his amount of detail is amazing. They did such an amazing job just capturing Chris Hemsworth's likeness and making him look like the Thor from Endgame. So I just, I can't wait to get started and show you. Um, before I show you him though, I'm going to show you his accessories. Um, I'm actually really excited to pose him up next to my other uh, my uh, other Endgame figures because um, I think I have three of them so far. Um, and they did release an Endgame um, Star-Lord, but it's basically the same version as the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 version. So he'll also pair nicely with all of them together as, as well as Gamora as well. So that'll be really exciting um, to kind of see them all together, um, which I will definitely post pictures of them all together at the end of this video. But starting off with the accessories, you can see that he comes with these little um, peg-like deals. Um, these are specifically designed to go into his chest. So as you can see right here, there are like these little black peg type things and you can actually take them out. Um, they can be a little hard to take out sometimes. Um, that's one of the flaws of this that I would have to say is probably taking him out because that honestly is, <laughs> I, I think I spent like 15 minutes on one of them before. Um, when I first got him and it was just kind of hard. So I kind of wish that they would have had a simpler way of doing that. Um, maybe have them in there like magnetized and have a way to pull them out. I don't know. But you know, it's really cool and the effect's really great. So if you don't want him to have lightning, just put the black on. Um, but if you do want him to have a lightning effect, all you would have to do is essentially just kind of pop that in like so and uh you can see like the lightning shooting off and you'll have them all on there and uh, once they are all on he does have batteries that you have to put in in the back um, and a switch so once you switch that on you can see the crazy bright lights <laughs> that um will be lightning and stuff so that's kind of a cool effect and he does have like a um uv effect too so if you have a case with like uv lighting on it or anything like that, um, you can see that um, they do have like a type of paint over it that gives it that kind of lightning-like feature, which is really cool. Um, they have it on him as well. So turning that back off, it's really nicely designed and you can see like the nice hue work in it. If I can get it to focus there, there we go. Um, you can see like it has dark blues, clears. It makes it look really nice and like lightning, which is really great. And I like the hue design around the edge right there too. So that's really, really great. Um, and then you could just take that out and pop the black back in like so. Just kind of put it in right there. And then he's back to his normal state, which is really, really cool. Um, so yeah, as for the rest of his accessories, so he does come with all of those, about six of them for his chest. And um, they're all like right there and they all have different kind of patterns so they're not all the same and they're different sizes so um, when you are putting them in be careful that you are choosing the correct size for them because it goes from biggest to smallest on his chest moving on you can see he comes with a great assortment of hands for holding stuff fists relaxed pair of hands and um, these which I call his um, what, whatever you want to call his hammer his maginier or whatever it's called I can't pronounce it at the moment but um, yeah, he does have different hands, like this one's for calling it, calling his hammer. So that's really cool. And then going over here, I will quickly show, um, oh wait, did they, ooh, drop those. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, I already had the bag open because I already used one of them, but um, he does come with extra pegs so that if you were to break one, you would have a replacement. And, um, here you can see different types of lightning. 
um, for different things. So you can put these on different type things. Like I already have one of them here on his uh, hammer that kind of just shows like lightning coming off of it and stuff. Gives it a little bit more of a dynamic effect for your photos or whatever you, or however you want to pose him. Um, he's going to be actually a little bit better for posability because I don't think there's going to be an awful lot on his outfit that would rip or tear and he doesn't have a bison body. So he, um, so he'll be really fun to pose and stuff. Um, he does have a limited posability, which I'll get into later, but, um, he is really fun to pose for sure. Um, so yeah, they have different types of patterns and stuff that you can put. Um, I don't know exactly which one all of them go to because, um, and the and it says it in the instructions, but, uh, I know that like this one's for his axe. So you'll put this one like on the back and then this one goes like right on the front. So you'd put that like right up in there and it would show like a swoosh effect with the lightning. So that's kind of cool. Um, and I really, really like that they added that for like, you know, just extra different designs for posability and everything makes it look more realistic. Um, and his other accessories I have on him, which I will quickly show off. So if I turn him this way, I will show these off and then I'll get into him himself. Um, he does have his axe, which I, I think it's called a, uh, a storm breaker. Um, you can see it's really nicely detailed. Um, it's wood, like um, spoiler, like what uh, when Groot gives his arm to make the motion or to make the uh, storm breaker. Um, you can see like the texturing in the wood. It looks like Groot kind of. Very nice paint application there. And then right there you can see really nice textures like it was used and worn just like it was like kind of handmade. And it has um, nice like kind of designs on the inside as well. Um, but it isn't just a static piece, which is really, really cool. Um, it actually lights up. Um, so you got to put the batteries into the back. So I would be careful doing that because this part right here is really, really hard to get off. And I really was scared to break it. But once you get it off, you can put the batteries in. And uh, there's a button on it that's hidden that, you know, you can turn it on and it'll work. I'm really glad that you don't have to take off a piece and turn it on because that's always a hassle. So I'm really glad that they could uh, build in the button. So you, all you got to do is press it and it'll turn on. And that's actually right here in the top. It's kind of blended in with the vines. So you just press it and it'll light up. And do, it looks so cool, like all lit up and stuff because they like added some inside details like that kind of give it like a cloudy effect. And I swear to you in person, it looks even cooler, but it's kind of hard to pop up on my camera, but it does have like kind of like a cloudy effect, which I thought was so cool that they included that. It makes it like look a lot more realistic and more kind of magical, which is really cool. So yeah, that one lights up for sure. And then to turn that off, I will definitely have some photos with him kind of lit up too, because he does look really, really cool lit up. Let me adjust him here. Going here, you can see his hammer. And you can see that I do have a uh, piece of lightning on the hammer just to kind of demonstrate how one of them look on him. Um, so yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Relatively easy to put on too, which is really great. Um, and the hammer itself is really, really detailed and I like it a lot. Um, it looks just like the one in the movie and it has really great application to make it look like real metal, which is really awesome. It has really nice texturing here. And then as for the actual uh, handle, that also looks like it's created from wood and metal, but it's all like very nice uh, light plastic, but it definitely looks real. And then you can see it has a faux leather handle at the bottom in case you just want him to hold it like he was about to swing it, um, kind of helicopter style. Um, so that looks really, really nice. And actually, I don't know if I can one-handedly do it, but it does light up. Yeah, I don't think I can do it with one hand right now, but I will later um, in photos maybe have it lit up too. But it does have the same type of uh, light up feature that this one has, where it has like kind of like the, uh, kind of has like this cloud effect. So it does have 
is the same cloud effect inside the hammer too. And I will make sure to include that and turn it on um, as well. That one's a little bit more complicated. It's not like a button or anything. Um, you actually twist the handle and it will, um, if I can get it to focus there, it will uh, light up. You just twist the handle to turn it on and uh, twist it to turn it back off. So that was a really cool feature. So you don't have any like buttons or anything on it kind of obstructing the, the realistic effect, which is really cool. So now what I'm going to do, since I've shown all of the uh, accessories, is I will get him on a turntable and I will kind of show all of his details kind of 360 for you guys. Okay, so I have him on a turntable here and you can see automatically he just looks so good. Like it looks just like Chris Hemsworth in his endgame uh, attire and I just, I absolutely love it. And I automatically can say, I think that the, uh, I think that the, um, the likeness is there and it'll look really great next to, uh, if you have any other Marvel or Endgame figures, he'll just fit in perfectly, especially Endgame. Um, I have a few Endgame figures and I really can't wait to, uh, pose them all up together and kind of have a little bit of a scene. Um, that'll be really, really fun. Um, so yeah, let's get into him. You can see his head sculpt here, which is really, really great. Um, it's definitely his, uh, the actor's likeness, Chris Hemsworth. I can definitely see him in it perfectly. Um, and you can see that he has his braided beard like in, uh, like at the end of Endgame, um, cause this is his battle attire. And he does have really nicely sculpted hair. Um, I will say that it is a positive and a negative for me because it does look really, really good. But I will say that it is technically kind of limiting his posability. And what I really, really wish they could have done was done maybe a partial hard and partial soft type of hairdo so that they could have captured this look, but also kind of, you know, for like a longer haired character, give him some sort of textured rooted hair. So that way you could pose his head any way that you wanted and you wouldn't have to really risk um, breaking the hair or um, just having it not fall right. Um, I actually don't think you would necessarily break the hair it is really flexible but it's all one piece kind of even though it just has different like little flyaways that are flexible but i just feel like in certain positions it doesn't necessarily sit right so um it just looks a little funky and i wish that um it would lay a little bit better in those positions but overall it's really great and as you can see like they do have a lot of really nice um texture in the paint let alone and the sculpting is very, very nice. And there's a lot of great texturing in the sculpt um, as well. Like you can see individual hair kind of pieces. They just really did an amazing job on it. And I do like the ponytail in the back and the way it lays too, it looks pretty natural to me. So that's really awesome. And then going back around, you can see kind of like the twist and the braid and how it um, kind of settles, which is really nice. And the little swoop in the front also looks really nice and blends very seamlessly into the head sculpt itself. Going down, you can see kind of his like, um, also his like little tip of his beard. And I wanted to say that it does say in the instructions that when you are moving his head, if you choose to get one of uh, him, um, you have to be very careful and kind of move it, like lift his head up to tilt it because you don't want to like drag this on his like chest or anything because this is really fragile and a really delicate piece it does move and it's flimsy and I just wouldn't want you to kind of rip it off um I've already I've already been um scared <laughs> to move his head a little bit because I just don't want to rip off that little piece right there but I did want to make that aware if you did get this figure but it also does say it in the instructions as well um definitely when you if you do get these figures read the instructions before you take them out at all because they do have some pretty helpful tips about how to prolong their life and uh, have them on your shelves for many years to come. Um, going here, you can see his eyes, which are, of course, the, um, it's like the blue-brown chromatic type of thing, um, which plays a part in the movie. Um, won't spoil it, but yeah, it does have that um, look right there. It's a little hard to see because they're uh, a little bit more darker eye colors. Um, but they do look really good. And there is a feature, which I will show now, with the eyes, where if you do put, like, if you have, like, a blue UV light right here, 
and you shine them on his eyes. He does have reflective paint on it. So it does um, give off kind of like a lightning effect, which is really, really cool. Um, and it looks even more prominent on, on uh, in person than on camera, but I thought that that was a really cool feature to have. So if you have a UV display um, and you have all this like lightning stuff on him as well, you can see that the lightning even reflects really nicely. Um, so if you can have like a full on UV light above him, he will look amazing. Um, you can see the, even the paint texture looks really, really nice. and really looks like, like actual skin, which is really cool. Like the amount of detail that they do alone in just paint is really, really great. But yeah, I think that's it for the head. I just, I can't get over how accurate it looks to him and how amazing it is. Like the attention to detail is awesome with these figures. But going down to the chest, you can see that he does have like a really nice design in the texturing. Um, and it's not completely like one texture as well. It does have like dusting on it to kind of give off that, um, that it's been through battle a little bit. So it does have like minor wear and tear. Um, so yeah, definitely it, it isn't like uh, your figure arrived damaged. It's definitely meant to be that way. Um, so that's really cool. And then as I mentioned, um, these are removable to put in the little uh, lightning pieces. Um, but even these are really nicely detailed and kind of look really metal. Um, they are plastic pieces, but um, I do like that like stressed look to them. Like you can see bits of um, the metal kind of scratched, which is really, really nice. And then here, these are going off to the side here. You do have like a little bit of like a piece right here to kind of give room and separate the shoulder to try and make it a little bit more seamless this is more like a chest plate and under here you have his like what i would call his like chain mail shirt type deal um it is just his uh, arm so uh it's not like a full-on chain mail shirt underneath i don't think i don't even think i don't know if he has a full body underneath this or if this is like his full body and they added arms to it um i'm not quite sure how it works but this is a non-removable piece so um, you won't be like changing them into anything else like that. And I'm pretty sure that this is his torso. Um, but it, the chain mail is like a fabric and it's like a really hard kind of durable fabric. Um, so it looks really nice and like real chain mail, but it does also come with a con. Um, when you are moving his arm, his arm does not, um, go up very, very far. Um, I could probably get it up a little bit more, but it's a little bit hard to um, do it one-handed. But it is a very, very like sturdy material and very thick. So your posability is going to be very limited in it. Like you're not going to have his arm come all the way up. It'll probably get to about 90 degrees and stop. Um, so not really too big of a deal because I don't think for this type of figure anyways, you would do too dynamic of a pose. But... Um, do keep that in mind that this is kind of restrictive a little bit and you won't get like a full range of motion in the arm necessarily. Um, he does have a really, really great shape to his torso and everything. Just like in the movie, he is a little bit, you know, out of shape in the end game movie. So you can see that he does have a little bit of a belly, um, which they did a great job sculpting and everything. The chest plate looks really great. Um, and the proportions look really, really nice as well. Basically, just like the movie, which is really, really awesome. And then you can see a different bit of metal texturing in here as well, which is awesome. Um, going down, he does have um, a really nice pair of uh, pleather pants. Um, definitely be careful with these because um, I've been told that like in different changing temperatures that this can tend to peel, but um, it does feel really nice, really thick material. Um, and really sturdy, which I really, really like. And then there's a different type of texture right here to kind of give it that kind of armored look. And then it does have a different material here to kind of allow range for his um, knees to move. It's like a little bit more stretchier. So you will actually get pretty good motion in the legs. Um, and they do go to about maybe a little bit more than 90 degrees, which is really, really good.
Um, and then he does have his boots, which also have a little bit of a weathered look to them, and I really like. Um, and something that I actually really like about his boots is that, um, like my Star Lord, he has a split cut boot design, so you will get a great range of motion in his feet. Um, you can get them to like kind of go down. If you, uh, it's hard to do with one hand, but they are split. So you can see right there. So that will have articulation up and down so that you are able to uh, kind of have a little bit more range of movement. Um, I know my, my Gamora figure, she doesn't have a split coop boot design. So I, uh, she is a little bit more like harder to pose and she doesn't have ankle pivot. Um, but I'm really glad that this one does because you'll definitely be able to have a little bit more range of movement, which is really cool. Um, going back to his uh, arms, you can see that he does have his like gauntlets type deal. I almost forgot about those. Um, but they're a solid plastic and removable. Um, so you can kind of adjust them around or if you wanted to, you could get rid of them. But um, they're like a, one solid piece, but they got great design as well to kind of look like real wrappings and it has metal buckles on it that, or they're plastic buckles, but they're made to look metal. So the paint jobs are really, really great there. And then for his final piece is his back. And you can see that under his hair, he does have a plastic piece that kind of goes into the, um, the uh, chest plate and comes out the back. And it kind of just hides the, you know, underneath portion of how this is. This is a static piece. It's not going to be coming off anytime soon. It's meant to stay in its place. Um, but you can see that the texturing is really nice and it's this really nice red satin. It's very soft um, and just really well done. Um, the under portion is a solid black, but um, if you can see, if I can get it to focus, it does have like, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it does have a little bit of like a um, pattern. I'm not really sure what I would call the pattern, but it is really, really nice just kind of give it a little bit more dimension than a solid black cape with red. Um, on the edges here, you can see that it has a little bit of like a lined design as well, which really, really is awesome. Um, the cape is actually a little bit darker in person too. It's not as red. It's more like a, of like a darker, dark, like a little bit darker colored red, not as bright, but my camera is kind of making it look a little bit brighter. Um, it is pleated, so you can like kind of stretch that out and you can see the pleated but it's like kind of lined so they got it to look just right just kind of like it's falling the right way and stuff um and they have like these little like divots in here just to kind of give it a little bit more texture as well and make it look a little bit more like the movie but it is pretty wide and it looks really really good and i really like it a lot for sure it looks really movie accurate and it's the right length and everything so that's really cool um, and then last but not least for him, he has his stand. Um, it does have his symbol right there and it's the same style of stands as the other Avenger Endgame stands. It has Thor in the front. Um, and I think the only change is his name and his logo. But he does come with a um, dynamic stand. So if you will look back here, whoop, if you look back here, you can see that there's like a rod that goes all the way up and um, you can see the clamp right here. Um, I will talk about the positives to this and the negatives really quickly. Um, it is a really nice stand and I really like it for, uh, cause he does like, you know, like jump in the air with these weapons and kind of, you know, fly almost. So you can give this um, great posability with, you know, kind of making him look like he's flying through the air with his hammer or jumping through the air to attack. Um, but the negative, as you can probably see is um, I don't have this around his waist because it doesn't fit very well necessarily. Um, it kind of like, I don't know, it just kind of like can slip off easily. So I have it around his thigh, which is probably around the best I could come up with. Um, but also it's so long right in the back that it does kind of hinder the cape a little bit and kind of cause it to go upward. So I just kind of, you know, I had to try and find a way um, somebody uh, uh, in a group uh, for these figures and stuff kind of recommended to 
tilt it over his shoulder so that it's not laying as weird. Um, it still does a little bit, but you can kind of get it to lay a little bit more flat. That way, um, that way it's not like crazily ridiculously up in the air. Um, but I will say that that's a negative. I, I wish that they would have come with a um, crotch style stand as well so that you could have one that went between his legs and he would stand up straight and then also have the dynamic stand if you chose to have him fly or have him just stand on the ground. Um, but that isn't too big of a deal. Um, it was just kind of a little bit of a struggle just to kind of find a way to get him standing here nicely without making him look kind of weird. And that's for my, you know, for my case space as well. I probably wouldn't have him flying in the air because he can, he'll probably just fit because um, he is a really tall figure. Um, and I'll have him next to the other Avengers to kind of do a height comparison. Because um, what Hot Toys does is they do one six scale figures based off the actors. So they are different heights. They're not like a standard 12 inch or, you know, 13 inch figure. They're all varying sizes based off of how the um, actors are in real life. So that's kind of cool. But, um, but yeah, I definitely wouldn't have him... Um, flying in the air inside the case due to space. So I definitely wish that they would have done a separate stand just for standing as well. But that's a little bit of a nitpick. Um, overall, I absolutely love this figure. I feel like they did an amazing job at, you know, the likeness and everything. And I just think it's really cool that, you know, you can like have UV lights that give them lightning eyes and stuff like that and kind of give off of that sort of look as well. Um, but yeah, I'd definitely love to know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, let me know if you're going to pick this one up or, uh, what your thoughts are in terms of quality and posability and stuff. And I'll definitely make sure to add photos in the, uh, at the end of the video so that you can kind of see his light up features and, uh, just other stuff that he has to offer. But I think that's all and I will see you in the next one. Bye.